maybe this section I don't think is very explicit in our book. It's just kind of buried within other sections. So um, don't really have a section for it. But approximation techniques and calculus, um, how to approximate tangents with tables and something called linear approximation, which sounds not bad, but it's really not as bad as it sounds. Uh, so uh, first thing, uh, you will on occasion be given a table and ask to find slopes and stuff based on a table. Uh, here I have a table given the position of a runner after t seconds, uh, and it's in meters and seconds. Always be aware of your units. Okay, question A says runner's average velocity. Well, average velocity is simply your algebra 1 slope. So my average velocity is going to be my position at 5 minus my position at 1 all over 5 minus 1, and we'll just plug in our values, 25.8, whoops, minus 1.4, all divided by 5 minus 1, which is 4, and then you'll punch that in the calculator and you'll get your answer. And our answer is 6.1. Uh, always be aware of your units. It is meters per second, so velocity will be measured in meters per second. So average velocity is nothing more than just the velocity that you normally do, or a uh, slope that you normally do in algebra. Uh, now when you get to instantaneous velocity, it gets a little bit trickier. So right here I'm talking about the velocity at t equals 3. Uh, well, that's an instantaneous velocity, which means I need to find my velocity at 3. And I don't have a velocity table right here. Uh, so what we're going to have to do, since we don't have an actual equation to find the derivative of to get my velocity, uh, that's why I use the word approximate. What we're going to do is we're going to approximate the slope at 3. And the way I like to do it is say, well, we'll just do the slope from 2 to 4. If you do the slope from 2 to 4, that is going to be approximately the slope at 3. So we'll say v of 3 is approximately s of 4 minus s of 2 over 4 minus 2. And then you'll punch that in the calculator, and you'll get your answer. And your answer is about 6.3. I paused it to do a little bit of work there just to save you from the mundane stuff. Uh, and that's really as good as you can do. Now, on the AP exam, they ask these questions a lot, especially on multiple choice questions. Uh, and if they ask, well, I guess they wouldn't do it on multiple choice. On free response questions, you may see this. And we have three options, actually. I like to sandwich my point. If I was going to do the slope at 3, I like to do the slope from 2 to 4 and say that's approximately the slope at 3. But you also could do the slope from 2 to 3 and say that's going to be close to the slope at 3 or the slope from 3 to 4. So there are three possibilities. I just choose to do the one that sandwiches the point. So I would rather do the slope from 2 to 4, because that's how I like to do it. But the other two are uh, legal as well. So uh, on to linear approximation. The idea behind linear approximation is that you're going to use a, uh, the equation of a tangent line to approximate your function's values. And let me show you a graph real quick of what this may mean. All right, so here's a graph. And I have a function f of x, and I also have a tangent, which we'll just call t of x the tangent. So t of x is the equation of the tangent. I don't know what the equation is, but I, w I do know that my point of tangency is x equals 2. So um, that point right there is 2 and whatever f of 2 is. The idea behind linear approximation is... If your function is something ugly, so let's say we don't know what f of x is, but it's something ugly, and you don't want to plug numbers into the function. If I ask you to approximate, say, f of 2.1, well, 2.1 is really close to 2. 2.1 is going to be about right here. So what we'll do, instead of plugging something into 2.1, what I'll do, see, there's f of 2.1 right there. It's that point. My tangent, look how close my tangent is to the actual function's value. What I'm going to do, instead of plugging 2.1 into my function, I'm going to plug, it's actually approximately, I'm going to plug 2.1 into my tangent. And a linear equation is nice. You can write it in slope-intercept form. And we can plug stuff into the tangent line. And there's very, very little error. The error is just whatever that distance is between those two values. And linear approximation allows you to estimate a function's value. And all you do is you plug in whatever the value is to the tangent instead of to the function. And you'll get your answer that way. So that's the brains behind linear approximation. Uh, a little bit of vocab regarding linear approximation. Um, 
the linear approximation itself, the, the, that phrase, it's not the process of using the approximation, but the linear approximation itself is actually just the equation of the tangent. So if I say find the linear approximation to a function, uh, that's the same as saying find the tangent to the function. Uh, also, the linearization is the same thing as finding the equation of the tangent. So, let's do a couple of problems. Four problems, I think. First, find the linear approximation to square root of x at x equals 4. Uh, and then it says use the linear approximation to approximate 4.1. Well, remember, linear approximation, that's a fancy way of saying find the tangent to the square root of x. So if I'm going to find the tangent, I need to find the derivative. So the derivative of square root of x, that's x to the 1 half. That would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Or 1 over 2 square root of x. And I'm going to find the tangent at 4, so I need to find my slope. So my slope at 4 is 1 over 2 square root of 4, which ends up being 1 fourth. And then I also need a point. If I'm going to find the equation of a tangent, I need a point. So to get my point, I simply will plug in 4 to my function. So y of 4 is the square root of 4, which is 2. Uh, and then, let's see, so that gives me the ordered pair 4, 2. I have my slope, I would roll that into a tangent line. y minus 2 is equal to 1 fourth of x minus 4. Uh, now, since I'm going to use this equation uh, to answer another part of the question, I'm actually going to solve this for y. I don't do this much. Usually, I'll leave things in point slope form. But I'm going to solve for y, and I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to solve for y this way. So that's my tangent. And if I want to approximate the square root of 4.1, well, the square root of 4.1 is f of 4.1, but I don't know what the square root of 4.1 is. So what I'll do is I'll say the square root of 4.1 is approximately, and I'll just plug 4.1 in for x to my tangent. So it's approximately 1 fourth of 4.1 minus 4 plus 2, and then we will work that out. All right, so here I, I did the, the arithmetic and I cleaned it up. And you end up getting 2.025 is approximately the square root of 4.1. And what I did just to kind of check and see if I was right, I pulled out my calculator and I actually plugged in the square root of 4.1. And the actual answer to the 10 thousandths decimal place is uh, 2.0248. So without a calculator, and I did, I, that's not difficult math, 0.25 times 0.1. I was able to get the square root of 4.1 correct to the thousandth decimal place if you follow your standard grounding, which is quite impressive that we could do that without a calculator. Uh, pretty cool stuff. You could probably, for any of y'all still looking for a homecoming day, you have a few days to ask somebody out. If you're having a hard time getting somebody to say yes, show them how to find the square root of 4.1 correct to three decimal places. You will get an instant yes to any date question you may ask. So, so there's some advice for you. Um, or some of y'all may watch this after homecoming. Just in general, good, good dating advice. Show people how to find the square root of 4.1. You will be surprised. Uh, all right, so here's another one. Find the linearization. Again, that's just find the equation of the tangent at x equals 1. So I'm going to stop right there. We'll come back to the rest of it. Um, so my tangent, I'm going to have to find the derivative. f prime is, what, 4x cubed plus 6x. I need to find my slope at 1, which will be 4 plus 6 is 10. Also need to find f of 1, which is 1 to the 4th, plus 3 times 1 squared, which is 4. So that gives me an ordered pair of 1, 4, with a slope of 10. So I can use this information right here to get my tangent, which is the linearization. My tangent is y minus 4. Oh, better pause this. All right. Uh, so I found the equation of the tangent, and I went ahead and solved for y. So I used point-slope form. I solved for y. Then I say use this to estimate f of 0.99. So now I'm going to do f of 0.99. But I'm not going to plug in to my original function, because quite honestly, I think having to do 0.99 to the third power is scary. I don't want to have to do that. So I'm going to plug it into my tangent equation, 10 times 0.99 minus 1 plus 4, and we'll work that out. And you really don't need a calculator for that. That's 10 times. That will be negative 0.01 plus 4. Um, 10 times negative 0.01 is, it is negative 0.1, right? 
plus 4, and you get negative 0.1 plus 4 is 3.9. So I'm going to pause this for a second and plug that in my calculator and see how accurate that is. All right, so there I plugged it in, and you get, uh, when you plug it into the calculator, you actually get 3.9009. So you can see how accurate our linear approximation is, all without a calculator. Again, easy way to get a date. Show it off. Take it to college with you. All right, so let's see. So there's number two. I think there were two more problems. Uh, this one's worded a little bit differently. I say use linear approximation to estimate this. Now notice I didn't give you a function. I didn't give you a point. So we have to figure out first what is the function, what does this resemble, and at what point will I find the tangent. So I'm going to find the tangent. Nice little hiccup there. At x equals some number. And if you look at this, 2.001 to the fifth, that looks a whole lot like something raised to the fifth power. Hey, the bell's ringing. And then I'm finding the tangent at. Now remember, you don't find the tangent at the point you're plugging in. You find the tangent at a nearby x coordinate. So I want a number close to 2.001. I'm going to find the tangent at x equals 2. So to do that, we'll find the derivative. F prime is 5x to the fourth. I will plug in 2, f prime of 2 it is 5 times 2 to the 4th is 16, 5 times 16 is 80, so there's the slope, I need to find f of 2 to get my y coordinate, so 2 to the 5th is 32, and I take that information, and my tangent is y minus 32 is equal to my slope times x minus 2, so there's the equation of my tangent, we will solve for y. So 80 x minus 2 uh, plus 32. And then I will plug in 2.001. So 2.001 to the fifth is going to be approximately, approximately, and I'll plug 2.001 to this equation. 2.001 minus 2 plus 32. And then we do the arithmetic for that. Um, 80 times 0.001 plus 32. Uh, 0.001 moves the decimal to the left three spots, so that's 0.08 plus 32, and you get 32.08 is approximately the value, and I'm going to plug it in the calculator just to see how accurate that is. Okay, so when I plug it in the calculator, 2.001 to the fifth is 32.08008. And we are pretty darn too close to having the right answer. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah? One more problem. One more problem. Okay, this one is a table, so it's going to change the way we work it out a little bit. Uh, this table represents the population in Nepal and millions of people. Um, and we need to use linear approximation to estimate my population in 1984. So my goal is to find some approximation for the population in 1984. Um, well, to do that, I'm going to have to find in prime of 1984, right? I'm going to have to find the slope at 1984, but since I don't have an equation, I can't use the derivative, so this is one where I'm going to have to use some kind of approximation technique, and 1984 is between 80 and 85, so I will use uh, that approximation method that I showed you at the very beginning. I'll do 17 minus 15 over 1985 minus 1980. That's what, 2 over, oh, this is sexy, 2 fifths. Ah, that's just 0.4. I'm usually not a fan of decimals, but with linear approximation, I tend to go to decimals. That's a nice slope. That's not bad at all. Uh, now, ooh, we have to find the equation of the tangent. Um, since 1984 is closer to 1985 than it is 1980, I'm going to use my 1985 and 17 as my ordered, ordered pair. So my tangent is going to be y minus 17 is equal to 0.4 times x minus 1985. And then I'll solve for y. y equals 0.4 x minus 1985 plus 17. And then we will use this to plug in. We need 1984. So uh, my population in 1984 is going to be approximately, it's not equal, it's approximate, 
1.4 times 1984. Dude, this is goofy, isn't it? I'm sorry. Yeah, 1984. Something's not right here. Oh, never mind. Minus 1985. I'm sorry. It's going to be okay. Plus 17. And we'll clean that up. And when you clean it up, you get approximately 16.6 million people, which does fit this table. It makes sense that we'd be at around 16.6 approximate uh, in the year 1984. So there we go. That's what linear approximation is. You are simply finding the equation of a tangent line. You're plugging values into the tangent instead of the actual function. And there we go.